December 21st is the shortest day and the longest night of the year. While we're in the midst of a season of great joy and light, for many of us in this world, it feels more like a season of great darkness and shadows. While others are experiencing the light of hope and peace, joy and love, we may feel as though our hope has gone, our peace is extinguished, our joy snuffed out, and love has vanished. Yet we don't have to be alone in our darkness tonight. God has promised to meet us and welcomes us just as we are. Allow yourself to rest comfortably where you are. Release your shoulders from your ears. Soften your jaw. Relax your tongue from the roof of your mouth and close your eyes. Let the prayer I'm about to read wash over you and settle into your deepest pain. Will you hand it over to the Lord and let him simply sit with you in your sorrow and lament? There is so much lost in this world, O Lord, so much that aches and groans and shivers for want of redemption, so much that seems dislocated, upended, desecrated, unhinged, even in our own hearts. Even in our own hearts, we bear the mark of all that is broken. What is best in this world has been bashed and battered and trodden down. What was meant to be the substance has become the brittle shell haunted by the ghosts of a glory so long crumbled that only its rubble is remembered now. Is it any wonder that we should weep sometimes without knowing why? It might be anything, and then again, it might be everything. For we feel this. We, who are your children, feel this empty space where some lost thing should have rested in its perfection. And we pine for those nameless glories, and we pine for all the wasted stories in our world, and we pine for these present wounds. We pine for our children, and for their children too, knowing each will have to prove how this universal pain is also personal. We pine for all the children born into these days of desolation, whose regal robes were torn to tatters before they were even swaddled in them. Oh Lord, how can we not weep when waking each day in this veil of tears? <clears throat> how can we not feel those pangs when we wounded by others so soon learn how to wound as well, and in the end, we even wound ourselves? We grieve what we cannot heal, and we grieve our half-belief having made an uneasy peace with disillusion, aligning ourselves with a self-protective lie that would have us kill our best hopes just to keep our disappointment half confined. We feel ourselves wounded by the, what is wretched and foul and fell, but we are also sometimes wounded by the beauty. For when it whispers, it whispers of the world that might have been our birthright, now banished, now withdrawn, as unreachable to our wounded hearts as ancient seas receding down some endless dark. We weep, O oh Lord, for those things, though nameless, are still lost. We weep for the cost of our rebellions, for the mocking and the hollowing of holy things, for the inward curve of our souls, for the evidences of death outworked in every field and tree and blade of grass crept up in every creature, alert in every longing, infecting all fabrics of life. We weep for the leers our daughters will endure, as if being made in reflection of your beauty were a fault for which they must pay. We weep for our sons, sabotaged by profiteers who seek to warp their dreams before they even come of age. We weep for all the twisted alchemies of our times that would turn what might have been gold into crowns of cheap tin and then toss them into the rubbish bins as if love could ever be a cast off thing one might simply be done with. We weep for the wretched expressions of all things that were first built of goodness and glory but are now their own shadow twins. We have wept so often and we will weep again and yet, there is somewhere in our hearts a hope still kept. We feel it in this darkness like a tiny flame when we are told, 
Jesus wept. You wept. So moved by the pain of this crushed creation, you, O Lord, heaved with the grief of it, drinking the anguish like water and sweating it out of your skin like blood. Is it possible that you, in your sadness over Lazarus, in your grieving for Jerusalem, in your sorrow in the garden, is it possible that you have sanctified our weeping too? For the grief of God is no small thing, and the weeping of God is not without effect. The tears of Jesus preceded a resurrection of the dead. O Spirit of God, is it then possible that our tears might also be a kind of intercession? That we, your children, in our groaning with the sadness of creation, could be joining in some burdened work of coming restoration? Is it possible that when we weep, and we don't know why, it is because the curse has ranged so far and so wide that we weep at that which breaks your heart because it has also bro broken ours, and sometimes so deeply that we cannot explain our weeping even to ourselves. If that is true, then let such weeping be received, O Lord, as an intercession newly forged of holy sorrow. Let our tears anoint these broken things and let our grief be as their consecration, a preparation for their promised redemption, our soul sealing them for that day when you will take the ache of all creation and turn it inside out like the shedding of an old gardener's glove. O oh Lord, if it pleases you, when your children weep and we don't know why, use our tears to baptize what you love. And now I'm going to read some scripture. <clears throat> Cried the psalmist, my tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me all day long, where is your God? And through his tears, he said, why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God and I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. Now I am deeply discouraged, but I will remember. <clears throat> Through his tears he said, yet I still dare to hope when I remember. And Jesus said, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. And in the end of the of the book of Revelations, it says, he will wipe every tear from your eyes and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. In a minute, you're gonna be invited to sit um, for a time in darkness and silence, acknowledging your loss, your separation, your confusion, or that um, that's being experienced by others. The darkness and silence may feel a little uncomfortable at first. It can be scary no matter what our age. Yet it is our prayer tonight that we can begin to feel the silence of God's invitation to rest and be still. And we can begin to experience the darkness around us as the embrace of God, a God who is present, maybe even more powerfully in our pain, and a God who promises that it will not be dark forever. After this time of silence and darkness, you can relight your candle, um, which represents the presence of Christ. Um, feel free to write, write down um, things about sadness or, or things that you're longing for. Take the time and the space that you need. Blow out your candle when you're ready. Embrace the darkness, remembering that God is with you.